everyone. Welcome to the last video in this series. So uh, uh, my name is Devin Adams and once again we've done two other videos in this series and the whole goal here is to set up something known as wildcard admin groups. So uh, in the first video we went ahead into the AD side of things. We created the two different groups with the organizational units and then on the second video we went ahead into the LDAP bind, made the groups on the FortiGates and also set the profiles for our admin accounts. And now it's actually time to test it. So, by the way, if you <laughs> if you're one of the one persons that actually watched this video, um, I, I the last video it was a misspelled password. So no big deal. It did work. But the whole idea here is for us not to have to make individual admin accounts for our Fortigate. Instead, we're going to point to a group membership on our. Uh, domain controller and that way we don't have to see their passwords we don't have to manage two accounts so on and so forth so we just hired some dude named Bob and Bob is a tier one FortiGate administrator so we're gonna go ahead and give Bob access to his uh, uh, AD account so let's go ahead and do that so uh, here's our users and groups alright and we're going to make a new user and we'll call him Bob good old Bob all right. Whoa there, buddy. All right, Bob. And we'll give Bob a, a super secret password here that he must change because we do not want to know his password in, in our test environment, though. I'm just going to go ahead and never expires because I'll forget Bob's password. But Bob goes ahead and he logs in for the day. He's ready to rock and roll. He's ready to get into the FortiGate. Now, instead of waiting for one of our uh, Fortinets or Fortigate admins to make Bob an account, we can go ahead and we can click on Bob and we can make him a member of what? Well, our admin group. So uh, he's tier one right now, so we'll say 40 uh, admin, right? One. Okay. Oops, here we go. 40 admin one. Let's check our name. Did I misspell that? I probably did. There we go. 40 admins. I forgot the S. All right. So we go ahead and we associate him with that tier one support. And now he's ready to go ahead and administer to the FortiGate. Now we have not touched the FortiGate. But uh, Bob goes ahead and he logs in using LDAP, right? And his password. And as you can see, he has access. As you look up here, it says Bob. We did not make this account. Instead, right? Instead, we went ahead and we pointed him to a group membership that said he was a 40 admin tier one. So in theory, he should be able to look but not touch. So let's go ahead and try that out. So uh, let's go to our interfaces here. And let's say that he's very biased about the word WAN. He thinks WAN is too wanny so he tries to come in here and he goes you know what that should really be called you know untrust and then he goes to commit the change oh man can he commit the change device detection and 40 telemetry no no he can he has read only access he cannot commit any changes right because he's tier one support so poor Bob but if we go ahead and we go into our, um, now let's see here, we go into our system and we go into our administrators, our administrators, I mean, there's no Bob1 created at all. So um, that's pretty darn cool, guys, honestly. So in fact, can he make <laughs> any kind of new, any kind of new account? He, he cannot. So... Uh, it's just kind of neat. So let's say that Bob does a good job, okay? And we promote him actually to tier two support. So let's go ahead and take Bob out of our admins one, right? And he's now been promoted to tier two support, okay? And he goes ahead and he logs into the FortiGates using his own credentials because I don't want to know Bob's credentials okay so here you can see he logs in like normal but unlike before where he had read only access as tier one support if he goes ahead and he goes to networking right 
and he goes ahead and changes that port one to untrust instead of WAN. He now has an OK button to actually commit the changes because he's now part of tier two. So uh, what's nice about this is that our tier ones can go ahead and have some level of change management control to escalate. But as you can see, we didn't have to touch anything on the FortiGates. It was looking at all of this on our domain controller. So, and as you can see, it committed the changes because Bob is now a part of tier two support. But you know what, Bob? You suck. We don't like you. You're out. You're done. He he kept on like talking about how much he loves Palo Alto, right? Oh, back in my last job, I had a Palo Alto. We're like, whatever, dude. Get out of here, Bob. So, we actually, we actually fire Bob. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. You are no longer with us. And so, Bob, you know, the last few minutes that he has <laughs> with the company, he's gonna go ahead and disable port one to go ahead and bring down our WAN interface, or what he calls his his untrust interface and he tries to log in with his credentials, nothing happens. Why? Well, we disabled this account. So when the FortiGate went ahead and did the LDAP bind, it came back as, hey, you know what? That user is not okay. He's not associated with any groups. He's been disabled. So as you can see, we didn't leave any gaping holes in our account management because we only had one set of credentials to manage, and that was on our domain controller. So hopefully, guys, you found this uh, uh, helpful. For those who who might watch it um, you know and as you can see once we set this up properly we can go ahead and create one of the accounts on our domain controller and we can give access to the FortiGate based off of tier support and then once they're terminated we don't have to worry about leaving a gaping hole in our security by forgetting to disable their access because it's all done through our wildcard admin groups so uh, I do believe that this is now supported in 40 OS 5, 6, and 6.0 going forward. Uh, don't hold me against that, but I know for a fact that this has been around on 40 Manager and 40 Analyzer since 5.4. So um, it's just one of those things where, you know, if we can make things more simple and make things more um, less moving parts, I guess you can say, uh, the less chances we're going to leave gaping holes in our in our security. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next time, and I'll try to get something up here pretty shortly. So, all right, take care.